Yeah, so, so you were talking about, you know, you know, the requirements of being a leader, of just having vision and mission. Yes. What's your vision and mission for Nigeria? Well, you know, I'm a visionary. And, and most importantly, the young Nigerians. Yes, I'm a visionary. And why I say that is that I always envisioned how Nigeria should be, mm. even when I lived in a village when I was less than 10 years old where there's justice, where there's equity, and where there is great prosperity, peace, and progress. And I've always thought of that leader that can put us there, you know, that can put us in that space. And it was when I had this idea of running for president, I put out a vision in a document uh, that uh, is available on our website now, Showray 2023. Dot org, and it's called Spicer Heat, which practically means you know uh, that security is priority, followed by power. If I have my way now, put power first. That's energy, hmm. <laughs> infrastructure, fighting corruption, creating an economic system that produces job, you know, sparks production, industrialization. Uh, the very important issue of restructuring, health, education, agriculture, tourism, and technology. Mm. So recently we added sports because we realized that uh, you know sports and entertainment has become part of the uh, very great Nigerian exports mm. to the world. Uh, and that not only do we get entertained by sports, but it brings in money for us. All our kids are playing basketball, uh, soccer, uh, football, and several other sports that we're involved in. You know, How athletics. many kids do you have, sir? Uh, two that I know of. <laughs> so the possibility is there are another 10 out there that we do not know. Yes, uh, that's, what they, that's what they tell you if you attend, if you attend the investor of Lagos. <laughs> you know. That's fantastic. Yes. So, so, so uh, let, let's take it one after the other for us. Education. Yes. You are very much aware of the ASU strike, you know, the NANS, you know. Demands and all that. All of that. You, you were even present at the airport road at yes. the Keja. I also you know. joined the NFC in Abuja to protest to the National Assembly. Fantastic. Yes. Put yourself in Buhari's place right now. If you become president as of today, how would you end this ASU debacle? ASU had specific demands. Mm. And what they're asking for since 2000 and uh, I think 12, or around 2013, when Jonathan was in power, was that the federal government should put aside 1.2 trillion to invest in education. But they were flexible enough to say, you know, break it into six tranches, mm. or tranches, sorry. And the federal government, as soon as Jonathan left, did nothing about it. Seven years later, the government is just saying, we don't have money, we don't have money. Just 1.2 trillion naira. But in the midst of you don't have money, the Accountant General can steal 1.150 billion naira. In the midst of you don't have money, you can give buy SUV for the government of Niger. In the midst of you don't have money, so people are stealing you know, some 700,000 barrels of crude on a daily basis, not mm. monthly. Mm. In the midst of uh, you don't have money, $10 million was given to Afghanistan, you know, a country that has very interesting uh, <laughs> reputation. In the midst of uh, you don't have money, you're wasting money on a daily basis on other things, which means education is not priority for you. So you ask me what would I have done, is to say to us, Look, whichever way we want to raise this, either through bonds or whatever it means, this is the money. But I'm not giving you the money. Except the increment in your salaries and remuneration, because ASU is not the only union in the universities. There's NASU, there's yeah. SANU, you know, there are student unions too. Mm. <laughs> so that look, to create a, an atmosphere of balance and uh, industrial peace, 
this is what we'll do. We'll set up a committee with the federal government and the unions so, to invest this money that we're going to put aside and so invest you, So you don't subscribe to the position of Atiku, which says that um, he wants to more than sort of privatize these institutions. So they, they can run independently, maybe through the alumni, for instance, or they can get grants or whatever it is. Um, you know, if Atiku didn't steal, he won't be able to private, run a private university. This is part of what the did, What did you steal, sir? Well, he stole Nigeria's money. From to, where? From the federal treasury. <laughs> what amount did he steal? What, what, how did he steal it? Well, if you find Obasanjo, yeah, ask, Atiku, ask, ask Obasanjo how much Atiku stole. Atiku has settled about the place that he had not been prosecuted in this country. For well, any, I uh, know. Well, the, the fact that they don't prosecute him doesn't mean that he's not, he has not stolen. He had to run away from the U.S. because of over $40 million. It was routed through his U.S. and his wife, uh, his wife U.S. account from Siemens, for it, just Siemens. Uh, they're divorced now. Is it, is it, it's okay. not T.T.'s, um, it's uh, Jennifer. All right. Uh, I think they're undergoing divorce now. So when they were in government, they went and created their own university from money that they took from the Nigerian state. If you ask Atiku, he'll tell you how much Obasanjo just stole. If you ask Obasanjo, he'll tell you how much Atiku stole, <laughs> to the point that Obasanjo said he regretted making Atiku his uh, VP. So they don't get it. Education is not something you play with. There's no country in the world that don't subsidize education. Mm. The US is, according to them, the apogee of capitalism, right? I went to school in the US, did my two years of master's degree, took college loans. But when COVID came, they paused repayment of loans. Now the US is considering canceling the loan debts in the country because they can't afford to burden their citizens with this loan debt forever. Mm. And the day you get you know, admitted to any school or good schools in the U.S., you get grants, you get uh, loans, you get all kinds of support. I wasn't even a U.S. citizen when I got admission to study at Columbia University. I tell you, the night I signed off on grants, uh, uh, and loans. I had enough money to rent a place to live. If I wanted to buy a small car, I could have bought and still pay my school fees. Mm. I wasn't even a citizen. So people just tell you, they just stuck recklessly and say, oh, you know, much, you must privatize education. I mean, people can't afford to send their children to school. If they hadn't been 1980 and the lives of a lot of people with secondary school being proliferated, across Nigeria, western part of Nigeria, I wouldn't be in front of you. Because hmm. there used to be only six kids that had admission to secondary schools in my village. The day I would have brought a community school, 150 people showed up. Yeah, so you can't take, education is not something you just can commercialize recklessly because it's the backbone of your country. Hmm. So how many people will be able to attend a kind of university today? except you are one of them, there's no way you can afford it. How many, can, how many people can afford to go to the university built by, uh, this is a base university, base. built by uh, Peter Abis? Uh, Dati. Dati, yeah, Dati. To go to Dati school, you must have like four million, that's the list, was, probably was, four was million. from corruption as well? I don't know how he got his money, mm. but we're talking about privatizing education mm. now. If you don't have four million naira, you can't go to a school. How many parents in Nigeria can afford four million naira per year? So, so people have me, never, let me, never seen. Let me, let me touch on that. So people have never had. They've never saved up two hundred thousand in their lives. Mm. Most Nigerians. Mm. In fact, there was a research done that said that five Nigerians have more money than hundred million Nigerians. And I think there was also another one. So there's a which, huge gap between the rich and the, rich poor. And the poor. So. So you can't just wake up and say, you, I think he wants to privatize everything. He wants to, private, he wants to sell NNPC. He wants to privatize university. He's already privatized water in Adamawa And you State. don't agree with that? Of course. You don't I think that like, government has no business doing business? Government is the biggest business in any country. Biggest business. You don't think government should just regulate and, and create an enabling space no. for business? If government don't need to exist, then we don't need government. We can as well just called Dangote to be running Nigeria as a private company. Yes, but I mean, if the government creates an enabling environment, create the laws, 
you know, amenities are available. The, the, it is not government's job to do business, but to regulate. What I'm the telling space. you is that the biggest business of any country is, is government. government. Government spends the most money in any country. Look, in the Scandinavian, mm. they, they pay people to stay in the university $1,000 per month. Some students, as a result, don't want to leave the university. They had to like drive them out. Countries, I think, it was Denmark, you know, mm. Norway. Scandinavian yes. Country. So they have their own social investments in the public and the life of the public. Norway is selling oil the same way we sell oil. They, you know, they've done it to a science in which every citizen knows how much they're entitled to. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, considering the country's wealth. Mm. So you can't just say, well, we don't need to invest in education. That's how we ended up with 20 million kids on the streets of Nigeria. And those ones are not even for universities now. Those are the ones that couldn't even get primary education or secondary education. Mm. 20 million of them. And look at the percentage of students in high institutions in Nigeria, very small. Do you know that there are only 1.7 million students in universities, in higher institutions in Nigeria? Only 1.7 million. What's the country's population? 200 million. Mm. Should we be proud of that? But guess what? The people that you don't want to invest in, that you said you can't, you should go to private schools, they are the ones that the UK, Canada, and the US came and scooped after COVID. All the doctors have left, nurses left. Had those people not gotten that, these are the people, the US, UK, and all these so called Canada. capitalist countries, they are the ones who tell the World Bank to tell you that you should not invest in education. These are our poorly educated doctors that you are now using to take care of your, of your medical issues. Mm. And this country has been denying of their services, even though most of the doctors went to school for practically free. But they have left. Nurses left, you know. There's nobody left except us. I mean, but they've left out of um, frustration. You can say frustration. Yeah. Yes. Uh, how do you intend to correct that kind of frustration? This jackpa syndrome all over the place. You can't correct it as long as you don't have any team. People have to have something they can live for before they stay in any country. Migration has always been part of human life. Oh. You know. Uh, the white man migrated into Africa in search of great life. Some of them came to look for gold, some of them silver, some of them came to look for courting, and some of them came to look for human beings to go and help them. What was driving slavery is not that people wanted to own a human beings. It was an economic uh, transaction. They needed cheap labor, mostly to grow and produce cotton. That's what was, that was what But, but the situation was. whereby this dark part is not causing us a, a brain drain. There's nothing you can do about it because you cannot lock your borders. What you need to do is not what they're doing. Now, you have 8,000 doctors left the country already, and then you close down your universities. So how are we going to produce the 8,000 doctors? And to produce a doctor, you need an average of 10 years, mm. a qualified mm. doctor. And the doctors are left. They're not the ones that just graduated. They're mostly the ones that have 10 years experience or more. They've all left us. But does it make sense to you that you're closing down your university at a time there's jackpot on your hands? Because these people are not likely to come back as long as you have an economic system that doesn't work mm. for them. What are they looking for? They're looking for what they call greener pastors. If the reverse is the case tomorrow, all these guys will probably return. Even those ones who have been stuck in Jaguar country will come back. They'll come back to the but country. But I'll tell you this about Jaguar. Anybody that's watching me, there's nothing there. Hmm. Yes, it's all temporary. You know, you arrive, yes, life will look good to you. You drive a car, it doesn't belong to you. You buy a house, it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the government of uh, the Jaguar country. And one day, you discover that you are in a strange country, especially when you get older and then you start missing home. But you have no home to go back to. And then you get depressed. Your family falls apart. Not in every situation, but because there's no that kind of traditional support system that we have here. If you have a disagreement with your wife, your mom can come and say, let her come with me until 
you resolve your differences. Nobody like that in America. If you have a disagreement with your wife, a judge who has also divorced his wife is the one who's <laughs> going to settle the case. <laughs> so, and he doesn't care about you because mm -hmm. they don't have that kind of support system. Mm -hmm. Everybody's just, you know, working like a jackal. So we should not jackpot basically. There's nothing for us there. I prefer that people stay back and fight it out. And fight for the country. Yes. Like you Because idea. this country could actually be a country that everybody could jackpot to. <laughs> mm. And this happened before. So, so, so you, you the just, royal you, family you, in Saudi Arabia that. used to come to UCH in Nevada to treat themselves. Mm. Yeah. So, but where do they go now? They've built their own medical system in their country. India has built its own. As far as recently as the 80s, I used to have like Indian teachers, Ghanaian teachers. In Nigeria? Yes. The, the Ghanaians in particular, they came to Nigeria, they jacked out to Nigeria to come and look for any job. We used to have Ghanaians who were selling puff puff and they would still do jerry calls <laughs> in those industries. Because the economic system was bad. But now, Nigerians cannot find a place to sell puff puff in Ghana. Hmm. The people are running to Ghana. If there was a requirement for visa to enter Ghana, you would see queues in front of the Ghanaian embassy or consulate in Nigeria. Everybody would want to get. People are running to countries like Togo. A lot of our students are going to the Republic mm -hmm. to go to university. Even when they don't understand French. Hmm. And the worst thing is that they do it without dignity. They don't respect us anymore. And as such, they don't respect our people. Well, yeah, yeah, you intend to restore that respect yes. in Nigeria? Well, you cannot restore the respect until you fix Nigeria, until Absolutely. you have things Absolutely. working the way they should. Absolutely. You can't enforce it. It's not something you can walk around on the streets, the stupid things we used to do, and start flogging people and say, you can't jack while you wait at the border and flog people. Then the next day, they will find another way to get out. Mm. Even as tight as the US border is, when Haitians want to enter the place, Cubans want to enter, they will just go and inflate tires, put their families on it, and push it when the current is going the direction of the US. And I say to you, if you make it, good luck to you. Mm. If you don't, and most times the US Navy will come and carry them. Mm -hmm.